Thanks, Ross, uh, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, oh, pardon me. As uh, Ross says, this will be 20, 30 minutes, and then questions. Now, the title uh, was the best, or is, the best preserved city walls in Scotland, obviously referring to Stirling city walls, and someone pointed out that perhaps that's not the best title. Uh, what might mean is the best surviving city walls um, in Scotland, and yes, uh, a slight change of significance, but that is, is the case. And one of the reasons that our city walls survive, as opposed to Perth or Stirling, as Perth or Edinburgh, is that uh, we never expanded in the same way that Edinburgh expanded. So um, the picture, this, this slide in front of you, is the back of Allen's. Uh, that's a ducat built on top of the gun, the, the gun bastion, the gun position on, on the bedrock there. And that's the back walk. And in Edinburgh, there would be closes running down that slope because the city expanded beyond its medieval uh, size. Whereas what we did is our expansion came slightly later and the uh, backwalk was kept basically as ornamental ground between the old city and then the, the new boroughs, the, the Kings Park, Allen Park, the uh, mid and late 19th century expansion. Uh, Sterling set wave, which is, is money from Empire. Um, anyway, slide two, please, Ross. Now, uh, famously, um, Sterling city walls were only ever built on the south side. The, there were, on the north side, there was no wall. There were, a, there were gates. So there is a gate at Friars Wind. There's a gate on St. Mary's uh, Port, or St. Mary's Wind, called St. Mary's Port, which uh, is the gap between uh, King Stables Lane and Irvine Place. Um, and the reason there was never a formal wall was because the ground was low-lying and boggy at the back, as we'll see. Um, and nobody thought they would be attacked from that direction. Now, uh, the pictures here, we, we have the bottom left, uh, the pub, the city walls, built into the city wall. Uh, that, uh, that is the city wall there. Top left, as you're looking at that, is, is the King Stables Lane. That's the borough, that's the boundary of the borough, the old... Uh, wall there, that's where the St. Mary's uh, wind port was, the gate was. Top right is the bottom of Irvine Place. And that is a later addition to the wall that gives you a kind of a feeling for the nature of the defences uh, on the north side. This actual wall is possibly 1650, possibly built to uh, defend against Cromwell. We'll hear about him later on. And then obviously bottom right, uh, the sign for the Barra's Yet, Barra's Gate, uh, which on the sign underneath um, is from World War Two and shows the direction to an air raid shelter. Barra's Yet uh, vanishes in the late 18th century. So if we get slide three, please, Ross. Now, um, Slide three shows the location of two ditches, and, and just to be clear where we are, we are in front of the station and running to where the old um, uh, Provost Pole uh, went. Um, the swimming hole was now the Premier Inn. Uh, and this was very low lying and boggy. This was certainly a boggy area when the Dominican Friary was established there. There are, however, a series of ditches. Some of these ditches have been known as the stank. Um, these are, uh, some of them are drainage ditches to help create land. Some of them are defensive. Uh, we've got 12th century pottery in some of them. We've got the remains of the 13th century Dominican Priory in them. Uh, they are dug out again in the 17th century for Cromwell, again, as we'll hear. But so this uh, northern side of the city wasn't without defenses, but it didn't really have a kind of formal um, set of defences as uh, as we have on the south side. So, uh, next slide, please, Ross. Now, uh, of course, Stirling is on a rock, so it is defendable to begin with. If you stand in the middle of um, Broad Street and you just think about how steep the ground is to the the north, the the, the north, the south. 
and the east, then the castle is to your west. However, the formal city walls are connected to Henry VIII. Now, um, Henry um, is quite a bullying dominant character and actually um, outlived, well, does he outlive? He, he ha his spans three Scottish monarchs. So James IV marries his sister, James V is his uh, nephew, and Mary Queen of Scots is his great nephew. Now, uh, James IV obviously dies at the Battle of Lod, 15, uh, 1513, I was going to say 1518, uh, 1513, and um, that's to open up a second front to hamper Henry VIII's um, invasion of France. James V dies of some kind of nervous attack when Henry VIII was trying to force the Scots to accept Protestantism, and of course, uh, James has, is, is Catholic and has a French Catholic wife. Um, on his death, the infant Mary, Queen of Scots, um, is, um, I, I'm, I'm gonna say available, I don't mean available, but certainly as a target for diplomacy uh, from both France and England. And Henry VIII decides it would be a jolly good idea if he marries, if she marries his young uh, son, Prince he Prince Edward. And um, when the Scots refuse, Henry invades. Bit of a pattern there. This is a process called the rough wooing. And what we have here in the uh, the accounts from 1547 is the sums of money spent to build a wall to deter. Henry VIII's invasion. So a significant, um, um, a significant undertaking. But you will note within the phrase there, it says for building, strengthening, and upmaking the walls. So there is possibly some kind of earlier wall there. We're not quite sure how to uh, unpack the walls. It's never really been properly studied in a formal academic or, and, and to a, a certain extent, I hope that we might do this in the future. Right, slide uh, five, please. <clears throat> now, this shows uh, Cowan's Hospital, which is built in the early 17th century. And it's just to say that the, the, the southern face, the southern wall of Cowan's Hospital, is actually built to the same specifications as the medieval wall. So the wall, the concept of the wall, was still being maintained and defended into the 17th century. Right, next slide, please, Ross. Now, um, this of, so he actually makes two, two attempts of invasion. The first one, he, he is, um, decides not to because he thinks Stalin's walls are, are too uh, significant for him. He does come back, or rather his general monk comes back, um, and he invades and takes over, or rather the, the castle is betrayed to monk, but you can see the indications of that siege. Monk siege of the castle, uh, the service stone, the pock marks on the Church of the Holy Rood, and probably the pock marks on the uh, Canvas Canvas Abbey Tower. In response to this, we have a couple of things. Uh, the first is an attempt by the provost to cut costs and offers to buy anybody a drink that um, expands the ditch. So that ditch that we saw earlier, the stank, um, doesn't really, this doesn't really work, and he has to spend some money. So we get the ditches extended, and several people argue that the wall possibly running down from King Stables Lane down to Irvine Place that we saw here we're on the top uh, of the wall here, uh, which has been uh, leveled and raised again with a brick element. We think this is probably the wall built to strengthen the defences against Cromwell and this is this, of course, this portrait of Cromwell shows him with warts because uh, he wasn't a vain man, and that's of course where the phrase warts and all comes from because uh, he didn't want the portrait to hide his face because he wasn't vain. Um, next slide, please. So obviously, if you have a wall, um, you need to have a fighting platform from which to fight, and you can see this uh, woman standing here. She's leaning in a crenellation. These are actually um, uh, from York. And you can either have a fighting platform on the wall, so the wall is big enough to, for people to fight on, 
or you can have a timber platform to the rear of the wall, which is what this bottom feature is. I couldn't find uh, an actual proper timber uh, fighting platform on a wall, so I did a garden feature from a garden catalog. Um, however, you will have spotted in the references to the, to the wall that there is mention of a foot gang at the south wall. So we think that there is a timber fighting platform behind the stone wall, and that's how the wall was utilized by the troops. Next slide, please. So this, this is a military survey from the middle of the 18th century. It, it was undertaken in the aftermath of the um, the 45. We are going to uh, look in more detail at this. It, I mean, it's a jolly good map. This is available from the National Map Library's website. Uh, there are some issues with it. It's not as entirely accurate as you might think, but there's lots going on there that's quite good. You can see the bar as yet. Uh, we can see the we can see where the Black Boy Fountain is. You can see a little. Um, is it a JLS at the far right hand side? You can see the, the town mill pond. Um, you can see uh, the churchyard, Kirk of the Holy Road. You can see uh, Count's Hospital. Well worth looking at this map. However, the key point here is to note that there are no defences to the north. Um, there is no city wall, there's no informal wall, there's no ditches. You can see St Mary's um, port. Uh, the gate at St Mary's Wind, and it's interesting to note that in the aftermath of 45, uh, obviously because the um, the town threw its gates open to welcome Bonnie Prince Charlie, they presented him with a key. The key had been in uh, Bannockburn House where he was staying. Um, it's now in the Smith Museum, and ostensibly uh, this was done because they didn't want the town to suffer uh, in the onslaught of a Jacobite invasion, and they justified it by saying there was no defences to the north. So what was the point of resistance from the south? Anyway, you can make up your own mind about that if you want. Of course, we know that the Jacobite siege, this is the, the last siege of Stirling Castle, that they uh, had gun emplacements at Gibbon Hill and at Ladies Rock in the cemetery. Anyway. So, will you next slide, please? Now, what this attempts to do is a bit of a blow up of the 18th century military map, which is by Lay, I forgot to mention. And then, a hundred years later, the 1850 Ordnance Survey map. And they are meant to be echoing the same kind of area. So, you will know that the city walls carve up as you walk up towards the library and Corn Exchange Road, and you can see that there isn't quite the same level of curve between the 18th century map and the 19th century map. The curve, in, the curve is there, but it's nowhere near the same scale as the uh, curve on the Ordnance Survey map. And just to say the quarry um, to the right of the curve is where those new student houses are being built. And then obviously further along is Barra's Yet and the Nationwide. And you can see on the 18th century map that the, um, the Barra's Yet is still there. That's the corner where the Nationwide is and then the, old, the, the sweet shop, which is now closed. So uh, there are problems with this 18th century map. It's not quite as accurate as it might be. Right, next slide, please. Now, you will also see that um, it, however, contains some details that we are missing. So uh, the the map at the bottom is the thing I showed from the, the beginning. Um, and we can see that lays above shows a section of wall around the cemetery. Now, we know that the cemetery was wall. We know that the bulk of the, the, set, the wall around the cemetery was actually demolished uh, in the middle of the 19th century. Uh, when the Valley Cemetery was, uh, the links between the medieval cemetery and the Valley Cemetery were, were, were linked and you had one grand hole. The western end of the Old Town Cemetery is later. All, none of the graves there are earlier than the 18th century. So there's a lot going on. However, it's very clear that the military surveyor in the 18th century considered that the wall round the cemetery 
the military asset. And you may just be able to see a small gun emplacement. So we're going to come back to this again. If you look at the wall on the 18th century map, you will see a little a series of little indents, little divots, little projections outwards. There's obviously the circular one for the Bastion at Allens, but there are a lot more of them. These are gun towers, gun emplacements, and what they're meant to be doing is firing platforms. They're meant to provide um, a projection from which you can shoot east, west, and slightly further out, perhaps as a cannon on them, a variety of things. But we'll have a look in detail at those a little later. Right, next slide. Uh, oh yeah, I haven't done that myself. So this is the only real picture of the walls in their uh, kind of pomp and ceremony, as it were. This is a 17th century uh, painting. It's in the Smith. It's very good, actually, because it shows you the, the castle and the, the kind of setting of the castle to the town. And it's worth noting that you weren't able to see the town, see the Church of the Holy Rood, but you're not, able, you're not meant to see the town from the castle because it spoiled the views. And you can see the wall there. You can see at least two towers in the wall. You can see the raised nature of the old town cemetery. And then the drop between the castle and the cemetery, the valley, um, very, very prominent. It, it is a bit odd. It doesn't show the king's knot for example, or it might show the king's knot, but not in a form we, we can recognize. Right, next slide, please, Ross. So this slide, what it does is it takes the Lay's map and it takes the 17th century painting and points out the various points of commonplace. So if we start from the right-hand corner, we can see the tower of the Baris Yet. Moving up, we can probably make out the tower of the, uh, the bastion at the back of Allens. Uh, we can see quite a biggish building, uh, which is probably on the wall at the Tolbooth, and we can see roughly where that is. We can see the, the wall in the, um, around the cemetery, and perhaps this might imply that this is our later addition, uh, the, the, the wall that uh, lay maps might be later, might not be on the 17th century one, or perhaps 17th century artists simply never thought it was worth recording. Uh, next slide, please, Ross. Now, um, uh, the top illustration is from the British Museum and records um, a spy's illustration during the 45 campaign or immediately afterwards. And it shows you a tower in front of the Church of the Holy Rood. And of course, the perspective is a little difficult here, but I am linking this to a feature on Lay's map, um, on Lay's map that sits on the, um, in the Old Town Cemetery. So that clearly shows a tower. It clearly shows a tower in front of the Holy Rood. That's the only candidate. Right. Next slide, please. So uh, I just quick focus on the gates. So we have Pont's map uh, from the, uh, the late 16th century. Uh, this shows, um, we've seen this before, but just to show you the uh, Baris yet. We've got a kind of plan of the banners yet showing the uh, the water from the uh, town burn, which runs from the park lock. We're going to re return to that. And then within municipal buildings, the stained glass is meant to show the banners yet. Uh, I, I'm not really sure what that's based on. Um, it's a bit weird, frankly, but it is meant to be the banners yet. Um, but clear, uh, but it was equally. Uh, constructed a hundred years after its demolition. So uh, I, just for the sake of having it. Anyway, next slide, please. So some of you, oh, sorry, some of you will have seen this before, especially if you play golf. This is the park lock. Uh, we mentioned this, um, uh, we mentioned this, sorry about that, someone was trying to phone me. Um, we mentioned this last week at the other lecture. 
This is fed by water. The, uh, there was a sluice. The sluice emptied out onto down through Victoria Square, onto Dumbarton Road, and then runs under the, uh, the barrage yet, or to the side of it, and may have acted as another set of defences. Um, next slide, please, Ross. So, when the kingdom is at peace, so after the 45, uh, late 18th, early 19th century, sterling starts to um, expand. We get money from empire. Uh, there's internal visitors, there's a kind of a booming economy. Medieval city walls are no longer appropriate, so we start to see various bashes through it. So, we obviously have uh, two different types. We have just holes battered through it, so uh, Academy Road here. Of the Corn Exchange uh, Road uh, by the library. Um, we also have gates and poles. So we have the, the hangman's entry, uh, which is just down from the youth hostel. And of course, we have the youth hostel entry, although that was to the uh, uh, Mary Erskine's church uh, when that was a church. And obviously, the bottom Right, so it is the gun emplacement which was quarried away. This is the thing that protected the barras yet, um, and that's where that new student housing is going opposite uh, Allen Park. Right, next slide, please, Ross. So, uh, there is, I, I, I slightly fibbed earlier, I, I said I felt that most of the, the wall is defended by uh, timber platform that you climbed up. There is one fighting platform. This is to the back of the library. Uh, the slide on the left shows steps. I believe these are the only steps left on the city wall. Uh, these take you to a platform. I think this is a fighting platform. Uh, the crenellations are gone. Uh, the wall has been lowered. And as I say, this is the, the car park to the library. And, and you are welcome to wander in that, but you just have to be careful avoid the cars. Right, next slide, please, Ross. Now, uh, slightly further along, um, this is next to the, just down from the city walls, and again, opposite Allen Park. You can see three uh, gun loops here for cannon. Um, and I've put a white line here to indicate the horizontal levels. Uh, in fact, you can actually see four. So there's a, there's a fourth one around the corner. I don't think these work unless there is a timber platform with multiple levels on it. Um, I don't see how that works. Unfortunately, we can't get behind it. That's one of those spots that's almost landlocked. Um, I have tried, uh, and I will continue to try. Right. Next slide, please, Ross. And just to make the point, this is uh, the, if we take Lay's map, you can see that there is a kind of. Um, one of these interns from the uh, the city wall, and there is a, it creates a vertical, uh, or rather a, a kind of um, an angle, and we can see that corresponds to the intern at the student housing, and we can see the gun loop there, and we can see that that gun loop must have been used to fire cannon to anybody approaching the, um, the barrage yet. So next slide, please, Ross. Now this is under the thistles, so this is um, from the middle of the 19th century. The blue line shows uh, what is known, what was known as the Bra Port at the bottom of Kings. Um, this is where the entrance to Boots is. Uh, <laughs> I've actually been under it; it's quite interesting. Uh, one of these days, I, I may dig out those uh, pictures and videos. Um, that wasn't so much a gate as a hole in the wall that could be sealed up in, in times of trouble. Uh, it's quite interesting. Now, you can see the red line, the red arrow, is coming from something called the port mill. That is what is known as the thieves' pot. It's the second bastion in the city wall. It survives under the thistles. And if you go into the basement, you can see a gun loop. From the outside, that's the gun loop. Uh, the picture to the bottom right, and that was designed to fire at anybody approaching the Dutch Raw port. So that's quite interesting, actually. Um, well worth a wee look. And there is an entire buried and sealed street under the thistles 
uh, which is, is quite interesting to visit, but you do need their permission. Right, next slide, please. Now, this is a rather complicated looking slide. The black circles indicate what survives. The red circles indicate sections of the wall that have been demolished between 1850 and the 1950s. So we can see if we start to the right, the bar as yet is gone. Uh, we can see that corn exchange is gone. We can see that the section for the academy, uh, the high school is gone. We can see that the section running up to the um, old town, to, well, not the old town, on. but equally, the black circle show you what survives. So, uh, rather surprisingly, if we look at the um, top left photograph, this is the thing that Lay thought was um, worth recording, that it was on the uh, middle, the mid 18th century uh, illustration of Stirling from the south. That survives, the footprint that uh, survives under that ivy. Uh, moving to the bottom left, um, and this is just next to the Old Town Jail and is in the ground of Mary Erskine. And we're going to come back to this, but you can see three bits of crenellations, then a lower gun loop, and that this corresponds to the kind of fag end of a tower. I think it's the tower that was there on the 17th century painting. We've spoken about the Bastion at Allens, the staircase, and then the gun loop uh, to the Baris Yet and the gun loop uh, to the Thieves' Pot. So, next slide, please, Ross. So, um, I had actually walked past this several times. I realized that there was something there. Uh, so if we take a look at the slide to the right, uh, we can see the doorway to Mary Eskins, to the, the youth hostel. You can see that there's clearly a building of some description there. It projects out from the wall. I think this corresponds to the building on the 17th century illustration. You can see the arrows running backwards and forwards. And then we have a view to the front of that. And as I say, you can throw, you can count three crenellations at the top and a gun loop underneath. Now that's important because it means that the ground level behind must have been accessed by both a staircase to get to the crenellations and then there's a gun loop underneath. So next slide please Ross. Now this moves to the interior, to the back of the youth hostel. You can actually see that this is the cemetery for Mary Erskine's but you can see the inside of the building. You can see the three sets of crenellations. You can see what may be a fighting platform. I'm not actually certain. I don't think that's big enough to fight on and to fire guns. So I think this is probably more likely accessed by a timber platform, which of course allows a lower gun loop, a lower for, for guns to fire under the crenellation so that you've actually got two fighting platforms in this section of the wall. As I say, I think the section of the wall relates to a gun emplacement, a bastion, something of that kind, right. And the final slide, please, Ross. And the final slide just shows you the gun loop and three details of the gun loop. So the top right shows you the gun loop from the outside, then the other two show you the gun loop from the inside. And actually, you can see the top left photograph shows the uh, the V for the gun loop uh, as it's as and and actually what you're looking at is the lintel for the gun loop, and then just in front of the lintel, you can see that the wall is wider, and this would allow the cannon or the gun or whatever is being fired from this uh, through this gun loop to move left and right, and thus to increase the the firing range of the defenders. Now. Assuming all things are equal and we, we, we don't have COVID, I am attempting to gain permission to dig here. The council own this ground, but it is leased to um, the youth hostel. So uh, I'm, I'm going to try and see uh, what the youth hostel have to say about that. However, I will keep you all posted. Uh, um, and on the line, 
should we ever get out of uh, COVID, I will probably lead some kind of guided walk in September or October around the city walls. Anyway, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed that. And please let me know if you have any questions. Fantastic. Awesome. Really, really enjoyed that, Murray, as always. Um, if anybody would like to meet themselves, they uh, give a round of applause. Uh, please do so now. Thank you very much. Um, so as Thank always, you. we'll open up to questions. Uh, so if you do have a question, if you raise your hand and we can either unmute you. And thing is, so uh, D. Jesse Mena, see you. Hi, Murray, it's Douglas here. Um, Hi, Douglas, yes. Murray, the, the bastion you showed in the last few slides, um, the, there seems to be from the painting a perpendicular wall running down the hill but not in Lay's map. Is there any signs of any of these perpendicular walls remaining? Yes, uh, hi Douglas. Yeah, there are two of, there are, uh, let me just think, there are three of these walls surviving. They don't quite correspond to the, um, uh, they don't quite correspond to the, the picture and Lay, the first edition, but, if you if you start from let's think about this the um behind the smith so if you go behind the smith uh, which i think is roughly under the the bastion that we were talking about by the the old town jail and the youth also the footings of that wall survive and then if you walk west uh to the butt well you find another of the walls there um and then if you walk uh, west again, along the lower back walk, you found another wall. And what, what you're looking at there are the one, um, the most western one that runs close to the Raplock fire station. That's probably the original 12th century boundary of the Royal Park. And as you come further towards the Smith, what you're looking at are internal divisions um, amongst the um, uh, uh, bah, 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 amongst the um, uh, amongst the royal park for various economic purposes. Okay, thanks. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it does. Yes. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, Douglas. Very much. Uh, if anyone else has a question, just raise your hand or you can pop it in the chat if you have uh, not got the video feature enabled. Uh, oh. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, I missed you, Stuart. How's that? Can you hear me? We can hear you lovely, yeah. Yes, hello. Hello there, Murray. When I was a boy, living and stilling, uh, you see the Mary, the Mary Erskine back gate, and just up from there is that outcrop. And as you can see in the painting, I was always told that that was the remnants of the old trades hall. You know, and that's when Academy Road, the old trades hall, was built using uh, some of the, the city wall at the back, of, at just at the end of Academy Road. Have you came across that, the, the old trades hall? Because that, it seems to me to be the, yes. the painting, yeah, well, the, the, the location of it. Yes. Um, now we we might have to be uh, the the painting. The painting is an indication. So the trades hall is at the back of is under the um, is under the what's currently the Stirling Highland. Uh, it was definitely there because uh, that was the site of the the White Friars. The White Friars were bought over after the Reformation by the Spittle Trust. The Spittle Trust then, um, there was a guild hall. There's a later the, the hospital, which has also become the guild hall. Now the guild, that guild hall is still there, uh, but the thing I was pointing, the bass thing I was pointing, lies between the Spittle uh, Trades Hall and the Cowan's Guild Hall, if mm -hmm. that uh, makes sense. So that, that, yeah. that but at the moment, um, I don't think anybody has ever really thought of that as a, as a military element of wall. Um, and I, I, anybody, anybody's recorded it as such. So, so 
And while everybody that's walked the book knew there was something there, I don't think anybody has formally recognised it as uh, as a novel, a new, as an integral part of the military function at the city wall. So it's, it's actually quite cool. <laughs> thank, thank you very much for that. Sure. Uh, got a question here, uh, Murray from Sheena. She's asking, uh, where is the stained glass window in Barajet? All right, that is, that's um, currently what is now code base. So uh, what, what was known as the municipal building. So uh, that's completed 1918 uh, and is a, obviously it's opposite the library in Corn Exchange Road. Um, the outside is a wonderful celebration of, um, of Sterling. So you have uh, Bruce, Wallace, Mary Queen of Scots, Cowan, Spittle, uh, the Abbot of Inna and Chaffrey celebrated. Within the building, there are memorials to the Argyle and Sutherland, uh, and there are also stained glasses. The stained glass, uh, from memory, the main one shows the signing of the, the borough status, or the renewal of the borough status by Alexander the, the Second, and on the floor, the first floor of that building, um, that is the glass showing the um, the barrageet. You can see it from the outside. So if anybody goes, if anybody knows where the the cat cafe is, if you go into the past the cat cafe and look at the rear of municipal buildings on the back walk, you will see the various stained glass. But I think you'll need binoculars to see the barrageet one. Um, and there's a there's a handful of other bits of stained glass, but um, uh, yes, that's that's where the the, the Barish yet one is. Thank you very much for that. Um, you were talking a bit on Cromwell's time uh, during here uh, on your talk. Um, I believe um, that the, uh, when he was up here, he, there was that he possibly sat at Drummond's Hall, which was one of the older houses located on Bannockburn House estate. Um, what uh, what other sort of impacts did Cromwell have? On Sterling? Well, um, uh, blah, 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 blah. well, obviously the Cromwellian regime, they're there for 10 years, so uh, there is a number of impacts. There's, um, there's religious dissent. Um, one of the, the more novel um, aspects is the number of witch trials in Scotland halves because there's a greater sense of uh, law and order imposed. Um, you start to have, um, uh, blah, 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 blah. you have uh, great religious freedom, great, great debates. There's actually a debate in the streets led by James Guthrie with Cromwellian troops. Uh, one of the more interesting things about um, the Cromwellian period, the middle of the 17th century, this is where sectarianism as a word comes from. Um, and what that really means are multiple sects, multiple interpretations of Protestantism. So um, you are looking at, uh, these really are religious wars. It's, it's um, wars between Catholics and Protestants, but also between Protestants. So um, Charles I has his head chopped off. Charles II is declared the King of Scotland, England and Ireland by the Scots Parliament, and at this point Scotland is, it might be best described as a theocracy, the Kirk uh, backs Charles II on the basis of his signing up to the National Covenant, guarantees religious freedom for the Scots Kirk. The Scots then invade England. This leads to, uh, certainly the Battle of Dunbar. Uh, we lose. There, there is a novel, um, the army has a novel interpretation uh, that they will win because they are the most just. So they got rid of all their military leaders because um, they weren't holy enough. Uh, the army was ill-prepared. The, the troops were starving. Uh, and these guys um, faced Cromwell's army and, and were promptly defeated. Um, uh, many of the, the soldiers were captured and uh, sent to the colonies. Now, I'll be very careful here for indentured servitude. So this was a form of slavery. 
And this was a form of slavery that was time limited. And, and this is, this, there is a, deg I'm loath to comment on degrees of slavery here, but this is distinct to black African slavery in that uh, the Scots and Irish sent to the colonies to work in the plantations were sent for a specific period of time after which they were free. Black Africans, where there was, there was no end to their slavery, uh, their children would be conceived in bondage and uh, born in slavery, born as property. Um, so uh, there is a distinction to be made there. And of course, we're obviously um, dealing with these, with the, the upshot of all of that at the moment. Um, but um, there was a tremendous impact on Scotland, a tremendous impact on Stirling. Uh, but as I say, the, there was a greater sense of law and order because the number of witch trials uh, halves across Scotland during that 10-year uh, period of the Commonwealth. Oh, oh so well in all it is always money on all these things. Uh, I guess they uh, try to catch you off guard, but it never seems to work. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, well, I mean, uh, I don't know if you would, uh, but that's no, quite interesting uh, getting into like what's happening today when we look around. But again, it's maybe a bit off uh, subject here. But um, uh, a, tr a, tr a tricky topic to deal with. Uh, absolutely. Is, uh, 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 is there any other questions around the room? If um, you have a question, either raise your hand or pop it in the chat. Uh, yeah, no, oh, no, sorry, we've got Jim there. Uh, there you go, Jim. Hello, uh, Murray. You were Hi, Jim. Faith on about uh, Cromwell there. When I, when I was working on, uh, well, when I was metal detecting across the other side of the fourth on Lord Elgin's Grand and his son, son's Grand, I found uh, material that was from the Cromwellian period and must have been brought up, came powder holder and other, you know, that sort of thing. And I was speaking to David Caldwell uh, about something else, and we exchanged emails, and he reckons that Cromwell built a defensive wall somewhere around Earth. Do you know anything about that? Or? No, I'm, I mean, it's, it's one of those tricky things for me, Jim, that literally the other side of the Stirling Council boundary uh, I um, I just drop off. Uh, well, I right. don't drop off. My my knowledge base drops drops off. Uh, Cromwell was building um, all over the place. So um, I think there's a there's a Cromwellian elements of Cromwellian citadel surviving in Dundee. There's certainly a Cromwellian gateway in Leith, um, uh, which which survives to this day. Um, uh, and, and anybody that knows Leith will, will know it well. Um, but, yeah, I'm afraid I don't know about that, Jim. I would have thought it would be quite easy. I would have thought Jeff would know about it. Right. Well, I know David uh, thought Cromwell had built a defensive system round about the Earth area, and uh, I actually sent him the phones from that period, I had found across the, the fourth, like you can't have sent them photographs. So mm. I don't know if it was helpful to them or, or anything, or whether they discovered parts of the wall that Cromwell built, or they just gave up. <laughs> but obviously, there, there can't be much there. <laughs> yes. right, thanks, Murray. No problem at all, Jim. Right, my son. Uh, brilliant. So uh, I don't think there's any other question, but one last quick uh, round the room. If any questions, no. No, so uh, I think that's us. Uh, that's the uh, okay. free man, Murray. Thank you uh -huh. very Thanks much, as always. Uh, incredible interesting. So a round of applause if uh, you may uh, for the fantastic Murray Cook. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next week. Brilliant. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye for now. Bye. Bye-bye.